Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. In today's video, we're going to take a look at JavaScript form validation so that you can give your users nice error messages anytime they mess up their form inputs. And if it's your first time on the channel, make sure to subscribe for more videos where I simplify the web for you. Let's get started now. To get started, I just have a blank Visual Studio Code project, and we're going to create an index.html, which is going to contain all of our form information. If we hit exclamation point and enter, it's going to generate our form for us. We can just set the title here to be form. And inside of our body, we're just going to create a generic login form. And we're just going to set here, the action is just going to go to our current URL. And we're going to set the method here equal to git. You could just leave these out because these are the default values, but I like to be explicit. Next, inside of our form, we're going to create a label. First, actually, let's create a div so that our content is going to be on new lines. And we're going to create a label here, which is going to be for our name. And we're going to create an input. Whoops. Make sure we actually set this as our name for the label so we know what it is. And we're going to create an input here. And this is going to have an ID of name. It's going to have a name of name. There we go. And we want to make sure the type is equal to text here. Close that off. And let's save that. Open it up using live server. And as you can see, we have our input here, which is perfect. Now let's copy this down and do the exact same thing. But we're going to do this for a password. So we're going to give it an ID of password. We want to give it a name of password, a type of password, and let's make sure our label here is also set up properly. And lastly, let's add a submit button. So we're just going to say a button here with a type of submit, and of course the text submit. And now we have our form here and we can submit it and you can see our information is going through. Now with that out of the way, let's actually set up here a div which is going to contain our error message. We're just going to give it an ID here, which is error. So we know this is where our error message is going to go. There we go, close that off, and it's just going to be blank for now. Now let's create a new page here, which is going to be script.js, and let's make sure we include that in our index page here. At the very top, we can just defer this so it loads after our body, and we can set the source here to be script.js. And there we go. And if you're confused by any of this form syntax or input syntax, make sure to check out my HTML forms video where I go over everything you need to know about forms and the input element inside of HTML. Now moving under our script.js here, Let's actually go in here and select our different inputs. So the first thing that we're going to have is we're going to have an input, which is going to be our name input. So it's just going to be equal to document dot get element by ID of name. Do the same exact thing, but we want to do this for our password. There we go. And we're also going to put an ID on our form so we can select this. We're just going to say form, save that. And inside of here, we're going to say our form is going to be equal to document dot get element by ID and it's gonna be an ID of form. Now, in order to actually catch these errors before they get submitted, because by default, when we click submit, it automatically refreshes our page. So what we need to do is we need to add an event listener onto our form, and we just wanna add the submit event listener. And inside of here, in order to cancel out our form from submitting, we could just take our E here, whoops, E, there we go. And we can just say e.preventDefault, and this is going to prevent our page from submitting. And now when we click submit, you see that it doesn't actually submit our page, which is perfect but we only want to do this if we have errors. So let's create a variable here. We're just going to say messages, and this is going to be equal to all of our error messages. And now let's check for our first error. Our first error is going to be if our name.value is equal to an empty string, or if our name.value is equal to null. This means the user did not pass in any name. So we want to make sure we send a message. So we're going to say messages.push, and we just want to say name is required. And then down here, we can just check to see if messages.length is greater than zero. This means that we have some form of error, which means we want to prevent the actual form from submitting, and we want to send these errors to our error. So let's create another variable here, which is going to be error element. We're going to set this equal to document.getElementById, by ID. And this is just an ID of error that we set earlier. And now what we want to do is we can take our error element, we want to set the inner text here, and we want to take our messages, and we want to join each one of these by a comma so that they're all separated from each other. Now we can save that, and as soon as we click submit, you're gonna see we get an error message that says name is required because we didn't put a name, but if we do put a name and click submit, you see it's actually gonna submit our form for us and show no error messages, which is perfect. But we actually don't need JavaScript to check if the name is required. We can do this inside of our input element here by just putting a single required field. Now when we click submit, you see this says please fill out this field and that's taken care of for us by the browser. But for example, this password is going to have different requirements that we may want to check in the JavaScript. So let's come down here. We can just say if 
password dot length is less than or equal to six, we want to say that the password must be longer than that. So we can just say messages dot push password must be longer than six characters. There we go. Now, if we try to submit this after we put in a name, you'll notice that it actually goes through and that's because we need to make sure we check the value here. So we'll say value dot length. And now if we put in a name, click submit, you'll see that it said the password must be longer than six characters. And if we make it longer and click submit, it'll go through. We can also do other things such as checking to make sure the password is not too long. So we can say if the password dot length is greater than or equal to 20, we can say that the password must be less than 20 characters. And now we can do the exact same thing. If we submit, after we put a name, you see it must be longer than six. But if we make our password incredibly long and click submit, you see it must be less than 20 characters. Lastly, let's add one more validation in here. So we can say that if our password, whoops, password.value is equal to password, then we want to throw an error telling the user that they can't set their password to password. So we'll just say messages.push password cannot be password. And now if I type in password here, put in some kind of name, click submit, you see I get password cannot be password. But as soon as I make it something other than password, it'll go through just fine. And that's all there is to JavaScript form validation. If you want to see more videos of me simplifying the web, make sure to check them out over here and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.